starts at 12. Good morning, San Antonio starts right now. This morning, a family is robbed at gunpoint. This morning, the gunman is still on the run and one person is in the hospital. The latest details from police just ahead here on GMSA. Today is Juneteenth and we are highlighting a pair of twins who are the legacy of an infrastructure dynasty. And taking a live look out of the Alamo City, we are also in the midst of Fiesta 71 degrees to start your Saturday morning. We're going to check in with Sarah Spivey what you can expect. You plan to be out and about downtown today. Good morning. It is 6 o'clock this Saturday, June 19th. It is Juneteenth. Thank you so much for joining us this morning. We're also in the midst of Fiesta. Have you been able to take part in any of the events? No, I did help out with the porch. <laughs> it's just a hard no. Well, no, no, I, I was out of town this weekend when it started, but I was able to take part in the recorded porch parade. Mm -hmm. um, and so that was really fun. I got to go out to one of the home, the, the actual grand prize winner. So you didn't win? No. <laughs> <laughs> uh, far from it. But the person, the, the family that did, oh mm -hmm. my God, phenomenal job. They right. did beautifully. Well, we know uh, the Cascaron, uh, what were the Caskey? Uh, the Ka Adam Caskey's Cascaron can Cannon. Cannon, yeah. Yeah. there we, we go. call it yeah. the Cascaron. Ah, Cascaron, yeah. Love it. Yeah, uh, and you know, he was out there having a good time too. It is interesting to be dealing with this kind of heat and celebrate fiesta. So if you are heading downtown today, just be prepared for how hot it's going to be all weekend long. Outside right now, we're starting to see the first light of the day. It's 71 degrees, skies are clear, and today is going to be a pretty sunny day for us. It's 69 in New Braunfels, 68 in Hondo, 65 in Kerrville, 67 in Uvalde, already 78 degrees in Del Rio. So while it's not too bad out there right now, the heat is going to be on all weekend long. I got to finally use these Fiesta graphics that I've missed using in the last two years. Today, Saturday, going to be hot and sunny, 94 degrees. Tomorrow for Father's Day, a few more clouds, humid and toasty, and once again, a high temperature in the mid-90s. Now, coming up in the forecast, we're going to talk about the heat index, how hot it's going to feel, and Tropical Storm Claudette just formed near New Orleans. So a lot to talk about in the forecast coming up in a bit. Max and Sarah. Thank you, Sarah. New this morning, one person in the hospital after police say a suspect broke into a home and started shooting on the property. Police called out to the scene just before 930 last night. This is all happening in the 12,200 block of Stadium Cove. The initial call came for shots fired, but police say there's so much more to the story. Alicia Bedetta joins us live from the newsroom with more from police. Alicia, is anyone in custody? Sarah Max, good morning. Well, not yet. That shooter hasn't even been identified, and police say after he pulled the trigger towards the home, he got in an unknown vehicle and then took off. So that search is definitely active this morning. At this time, police were not able to release information on what items may have been taken from the home. We know there were five people in the home. So what happened, this person made their way in without uh, notice and then began to take what wasn't him, what wasn't theirs. Five people were in the home. They all ran upstairs. Once this suspect was done taking the items, he stepped out of the home and began from the, the from the family's yard, began firing shots. So again, you can just imagine how scary this was for the family. Again, right now, police have not released information on what items may have taken. Obviously, for the family, that is not as important as their well-being. We know one person is in the hospital, was taken to University Hospital in stable condition. We'll have more information from police, the latest on this investigation in the next half hour. Back to you. Thank you, Alicia. Also new this morning, San Antonio police and Crime Stoppers need your help finding a man who they say has violated his protective order several times. Just take a look. This is Ray Lee Vita Uri. He is 26 years old and has brown hair and brown eyes. Police say he is wanted for assault, bodily injury, repeated violations of court orders and assault, family choking and strangulation. If you have any information about where he might be, you can call Crime Stoppers. That number on your screen right now, 210-224-STOP. In your morning headlines, we now know the U.S. Defense Department is pulling some missile defense systems and other military hardware and personnel out of Saudi Arabia and other Middle Eastern countries. And Defense Secretary Lloyd Austin says that he instructed the head of U.S. Central Command to remove the forces this summer. A Pentagon spokeswoman says that some of the military uh, capabilities and platforms will be returned to the United States for maintenance and for repair. She also says other assets will be redeployed elsewhere. More than a dozen migrants are in custody after a boat chase in Florida. Florida authorities say it was a smuggling operation. 
According to officials, the boat was trying to get away before it crashed into a seawall. Some of the passengers jumped into the water while others ran past the seawall. Customs and Border Protection officials say authorities detained a total of 16 migrants. Some of them came from Jamaica, Venezuela, Romania and the UK. The migrants will be sent back to their home countries. And speaking of Florida, a judge ruling against CDC restrictions on the Florida cruise ship industry. The state received a preliminary injunction that stops the CDC's orders of no sale on Florida cruise ships. The judge says that the orders, quote, likely constitutes an unconstitutional delegation of legislative power to the CDC, end quote. In its filing, Florida said the CDC overstepped their authority and its sailing order does not take into account vaccine access and COVID-19 mitigation measures. Now, the judge will allow the CDC to offer a narrower injunction to protect public health. Well, today is Juneteenth, a federal holiday. Juneteenth, the oldest nationally celebrated commemoration of the ending of slavery in the United States. It was established in Galveston, Texas in 1865. So Juneteenth holiday being signed into law is a big step, and we have a story of two sisters who are the legacy of an infrastructure dynasty working to continue that progress. ABC's Steve Owens Osinsabi has their story. On a good night in Philadelphia, more than 60,000 cheering fans of the NFL can fill this palace of steel that people here call the link. And, and few of them have any idea that one of two very talented black sisters helped build it. I'm Cheryl McKissick Daniel. And I'm Daryl McKissick. This train station at the World Trade Center, Terminal 1 at JFK International Airport, and the Barclays Center in Brooklyn, New York, it was a company run by one of the sisters that moved the old rail yard to make way for this new arena. In New York, um, we worked on the uh, Harlem Hospital, which was completely renovated. For DC, Baltimore, Chicago, Austin. Cheryl and Daryl McKissick are twin sisters and twin examples of black excellence. They are builders of America, the hidden figures of the construction business with construction and architecture companies that have helped build more than $100 billion worth of American real estate. This place in the nation's capital means so much to the family. Sister Daryl designed and built the Martin Luther King Jr. Memorial on Independence Avenue. Standing on sacred ground, and it outlives us. Their story is the very definition of Juneteenth. It began five generations ago in the 1790s with this man, a slave from the Ashanti Kingdom of Ghana who was stolen away to America as a child. He was given the name Moses McKissick. Uh, he was taught the trade of making bricks. Mr. McKissick, as we will call him here, would soon buy his freedom by helping build this famous plantation home in Tennessee. This family business kept defying the racism of America. And at a time when across much of this country it was unsafe for black Americans to walk the streets at night, the family ran a construction business across 22 states. Sometimes black excellence can seem What's what I'm looking for? Threatening mm -hmm. to people? Mm. Very much so. Now we have um, this effort to deal with race in America. We contributed so significantly to this country. We need to just own it. Steve Osinsami, ABC News. Very powerful story. I love those like behind the scenes kind of stories. Great. Amazing. All right, time now, 6.08, 71 degrees out. Well, Fiesta is underway, and if you are ready to celebrate today but don't know what's going on, don't worry, we have you covered. Still ahead in our next half hour, a list of the Fiesta events happening today. Do you have HBO Max? Yes. Did you get this email? Yes. So this week, <laughs> if you don't have it, we know that HBO Max subscribers took to Twitter, trolling the streaming service after they sent a very strange email. We have details on the email and who they're blaming it on. 71 degrees at 6.09 this morning. Sarah Spivey will have our full weekend forecast when we come back. Well, if you're an HBO Max subscriber and you received a strange email in your inbox on Thursday, you're not alone. That's right. Subscribers on Twitter confused after HBO Max sent an email with the subject line, integration test email one. The body of the email said this template 
is used by integration tests only. Of course, the trolling on Twitter began with a lot of questions and of course, as the internet always does, a lot of memes. So others thought it had to do something with possibly a new show. So what did the email actually mean? According to HBO Max's Twitter page, it was an intern. Ah, blame the intern. I know, poor intern. <laughs> the post reads in part, quote, we apologize for the inconvenience and as the jokes pile in, yes, it was the intern, mm -hmm. end quote. Likely story. Mm-hmm. All right, so before every show, a little behind the scenes, we do a videotaped, what do, you, what do you call it, social media video? Yeah, I do a little video for social media for Instagram and Twitter and Facebook. Shameless plug to the gram. Yeah, why not? Love it. <laughs> <laughs> All right, and just moments ago, found out it's going to be, what, feeling like 100 degrees today? Yeah, it is, no. Max and Sarah. I know, no, but no. you know what, guys? We should be used to it. It's, it's June. Uh, <laughs> this is the time of year when we really are usually hot. What's odd is to have Fiesta during this time. Yeah. But we're excited to have Fiesta back. It's been two years since uh, we've been able to see those Fiesta festivities, and it's going to be a hot one, but still totally enjoyable. And, of course, I think uh, a lot of the vendors out there will have nice refreshments for you today. Looking outside right now, you can see that we're seeing the first light of the day. That's a look at the airport. It's 71 degrees outside right now uh, at the airport, and that is pretty um, muggy, but this is about as cool as it's going to get all day because as soon as that sun is up, we're going to see temperatures rise. 63 in Comfort, 65 in Kerrville. It's 68 in Lost Maple, 68 in Divine, 69 in New Braunfels, and 68 in Seguin. The humidity, although it's high, it's actually going to be even higher in the next couple of days. So we do have that high heat index value that we're going to have to deal with today. Dew points are in the mid 60s and that's where they'll stay for most of the day. Uh, but but as we head into the start of the week, our dew points are going to be so high. The humidity is going to be so high that on Monday it'll feel like 105 or greater. And that's when we really start to worry about a very dangerous heat index value. So it is muggy outside right now. We're going to have heat index value close to 100 degrees today and tomorrow, but Monday is a day that we'll really be looking out for the potential for some heat advisories. In the future cast, we've had uh, clear skies. We'll have clear skies all day long. However, in the evening hours, we're going to see clouds increase from south of Highway 90, and those clouds will be with us tomorrow. Uh, it'll be a mostly cloudy day for Father's Day, but today a high temperature in the mid 90s for just about all of us around San Antonio, the low 90s for the hill country and 102 two in Del Rio, 100 in Eagle Pass for the high temperatures. So today, sunny and 83 at 10, 88 and muggy at noon. A few wispy cirrus clouds in the afternoon are possible. 94 for the high south southeast winds, 5 to 10 miles per hour in a mild evening. We'll still be in the 80s by 10. Tomorrow is Father's Day. If you're going to be celebrating, here's what you can expect in the morning. We'll be waking up in the 70s, mostly cloudy skies in the afternoon, but it'll already be hot by noon. 94 hot and humid for the afternoon high. So breaking overnight, we actually had tropical storm Claudette develop just 45 miles southwest of New Orleans. It's not a particularly strong system, winds of 45 miles per hour, but look how much rain it's already been creating for Louisiana, Mississippi, Alabama, and the panhandle of Florida. This is going to track northeast through the weekend, and eventually uh, by the start of this upcoming week, it'll eject back out into the Atlantic Ocean, possibly strengthening again into a tropical storm. But here in San Antonio, we're going to be on the dry side of that system. And in fact, it's just going to be dry and hot all weekend long. However, Monday into Tuesday, a weak cool front is going to move through, and that's going to introduce some isolated rain chances for us around San Antonio, perhaps some scattered rain as well overnight Monday into Tuesday. Uh, but as I mentioned, even though we'll be keeping an eye on the potential for rain and we could use a little bit more rain, the biggest threat, I believe, over the next couple of days is going to be the high heat index value close to 105 or greater on Monday. Yep, summer officially starts tomorrow, but it's already felt like summer for quite some time. All right, Sarah Spivey, thank you so much. If you are out and about today, remember to hydrate. Oh my gosh, so much water. All right, time now is 617, 71 degrees out. Well, are you ready for some deals? Prime Day is almost here in our next half hour. Marilyn Moritz has some tips on how to find the real deal. Mm. Plus, a woman and her family working to gain access to a drug for a rare form of ALS. Next, we're going to tell you about her mission to help other terminally ill patients. 
Good morning and welcome back. Last summer, Lisa Stockman Morello was a busy PR executive, starting her day with 5 a.m. workouts, keeping up with her three sons. But today she is fighting for her life against an aggressive and rare form of ALS, also known as Lou Gehrig's disease. Despite her condition, Lisa has been fighting for access to an investigational drug that can extend the lives of people with her same disease. RJ Marquez has a story. I see skies of blue. Lisa Stockman Mariello rented a dance hall for a special moment with each of her three sons, knowing it was unlikely she would dance at their weddings. Lisa was the picture of health until last August when her muscles suddenly froze and her voice got very weak. Yes. They were weird and disparate. Yeah. Weird and disparate, yeah. Lisa was diagnosed with an aggressive form of ALS. So a normal ALS patient will have about three to five years from when they start to experience symptoms until they pass. And with, if you have the AV4 slash AV5 variant, it's more like 12 months. There is no cure for ALS, but the Mariellos hope therapy could buy time. Three to five months would make me very pleased. Their doctor thought Lisa might respond to a drug called Tofersen, being tested in a clinical trial that had just closed enrollment. The Mariellos were hopeful they'd have access under the 2018 Right to Try Act signed into law by President Trump. The Right to Try Act really bypasses the FDA. But experts argue about whether companies can still turn patients down, which Biogen did, saying individual access to Tofersen could jeopardize the study. ALS advocates rallied. A Change.org petition circulated and gained more than 100,000 signatures. As special as she is, people realize that this law was put in place for a reason. The Mariellos say they'll continue to fight, hoping Lisa's battle helps others. Lisa's going to die sooner than most of us. But you spend the time with the people you love while you have it. And time is so important to Lisa and Bob. You are the sunshine of my life. RJ Marquez, KSAT 12 News. Time now is 622, 71 degrees out. Well, let's call it <laughs> Buckamania. All right, a man is going viral on social media after showing his passion for the Milwaukee Bucks. What he did that has everyone talking about it, including the Bucks. Good morning and welcome back. It is Buckamania for a Wisconsin farmer. Tony Schultz went viral for a moment that would surely make former wrestler Hulk Hogan very proud. Oh my gosh. In the viral video, Schultz cheers on the Milwaukee Bucks, who are in the NBA playoffs. So go ahead and just take a look. Mm. The farmer lets out a passionate scream and rips off his just shirt. A lot going on. Here. The Bucks shared the video on social media after the team beat the Brooklyn Nets on Thursday night. That's right. So don't worry. He's going to have a chance to, uh, I guess, redeem himself or do it again because the Bucks play the Nets again tonight. Game seven. Best thing in sports, we can probably guess how uh, Schultz is going to react if his team wins, if they win. I love sports. Yeah, there you go. Sports, <laughs> sports. 627, 71 degrees out. Well, buying a new home is becoming more and more difficult. This morning on GMSA at 8, we have the top ways you can win in bidding and a bidding war for the home of your dreams. And Governor Greg Abbott using his veto power to possibly punish the Texas Democrats after that historic walkout. We explain next. Good morning. Welcome back and happy Saturday. 6.30 this morning. I think it's 6. It is 6.30 it this is. morning, June 19th. It is Juneteenth. There is so much going on today. We have a lot of events. We also are in the midst of Fiesta. I know. It's so weird to be celebrating Fiesta in June, but I'm just happy, like Sarah Spivey was saying earlier, that we're actually getting to celebrate a little bit of Fiesta. Yeah, absolutely. You know, it's funny because we normally celebrate Fiesta in April, and in April we're still dealing with cold fronts. So I remember Fiesta's past where it's been freezing outside for these events, but we don't have to worry about that this year. In fact, it is going to stay hot and humid all weekend long. Hey, breaking overnight, Tropical Storm Claudette formed uh, southwest of New Orleans, about 45 miles southwest of New Orleans. Now, this was a system that was just hanging out in the Gulf of Mexico, was disorganized, but the National Hurricane Center said, yeah, it does have a center of low pressure, and you know, it's producing winds of 45 miles per hour, so let's go ahead and call it a tropical storm and give it a name. Tropical Storm Claudette is moving to the north-northeast at about 12 miles per hour. Hour. And the biggest threat with this storm is just going to be the heavy flooding 
rains and it could be very bad for some areas in Louisiana, Mississippi, Alabama and the panhandle of Florida. Uh, we'll talk more about Claudette's track coming up in the full forecast, but just wanted to bring you that breaking weather news uh, from overnight. Right now outside 71 degrees, you can see the sun is rising. The winds are generally calm at the moment and humidity is high 84%. 66 in Kerrville at 78 in Del Rio, 68 in Rock Springs, uh, 67 in Yavali and 72 in Carrizo Springs. These temperatures as cool as it's going to get today because Ooh, it's going to be hot with the sun coming out uh, for your Fiesta weekend forecast and your Father's Day weekend forecast. It's going to be hot and sunny today, 94 tomorrow, 94 as well. But we will have a few more clouds, humid and toasty tomorrow for Father's Day. So if you are going to head downtown to enjoy some of these Fiesta festivities, just bring a little extra water and you should be just fine. Of course, we're used to the heat here in Texas. I'll have a look at the forecast coming up, including rain chances in just a few minutes. Max and Sarah. Thank you, Sarah. New this morning, a family robbed at gunpoint in their own home and this morning police still searching for who is responsible. Now, investigators tell us the shots were fired on the property around 930 last night. All of this happening in the 12,200 block of Stadium Cove. Alicia Beretta joins us live from the newsroom. Alicia, any word on how the victims are doing? Hey, good morning. Well, you can imagine they're terrified, especially after one of their own family members was shot and ended up in the hospital. They'll be dealing with a lot of trauma and fear. And now that the shooter hasn't even been arrested or identified, of course, they're on edge. Police say this all began as a home invasion. The suspect walked into the into this two story home with a gun in hand around 930 last night and began to grab what he could. Inside the home were five people, thankfully no children, all adults over 18. Police say they acted fast and ran upstairs, that's the family, to hide while the suspect was inside. The suspect never went upstairs, but once he finally left the home, the victims told police he stood in the front yard and that's when he opened fire towards the home. One of those bullets actually hit one of the victims. The victim is a man in his 20s. He was shot in the abdomen and taken a university hospital in stable condition. Very limited information is known about the gunman who is still on the run this morning. Police say after the suspect pulled the trigger, he got in an unknown vehicle and took off. Max, back to you. Thank you, Alicia. Now to the latest this morning. Judson ISD is investigating a possible ransomware attack. District officials say they can't use their phones and email. They also say they don't know what information has been compromised. And a statement official said in part, quote, we have also engaged independent forensic investigators and third party experts who are working around the clock in cooperation with law enforcement to determine the nature and extent of this attack, end quote. Now, yesterday, the school board held a meeting to allow the superintendent to buy services needed to determine what was affected during the possible attack. State and federal agencies have also been notified. Governor Greg Abbott using his gubernatorial power to veto a section of the state budget, and that section funds the Texas legislature, their staffers, and legislative agencies. Remember, this all comes after House Democrats walked out of that key vote, and that vote effectively stopping the voting rights bill. Senate Bill 7 from getting passed. In a statement, the governor said in part, quote, funding should not be provided for those who quit their job early, leaving their state with unfinished business and exposing taxpayers to higher costs for an additional legislative session, end quote. The bill called for voting changes like shortening voting hours and changing who can vote by mail. The bill is expected to be back on the table once the governor picks a date for this special session. The House Democratic Caucus chair released a statement calling the governor's action a, quote, abuse of power, end quote. If you want to read the full statement, just head to ksat.com. Well, did you know there's an actual Juneteenth flag? If you want to learn more about it, you might want to visit the landmark and historic state site. Today, they will be hosting an educational event about the flag. It was created in 1997 by the founder of the National Juneteenth Celebration Foundation. The event will also dive into the symbolisms between the Juneteenth flag and the U.S. flag. It's a look at history that maybe not everyone is fully aware of. I know when I was growing up, I didn't learn about Juneteenth in school. I learned about it as an adult, and that's part of why I'm so fascinated with how the history of the last enslaved people in the United States um, bears on my life and the life of everyone else. The event is happening today from 10 a.m. to 5 p.m. at the Landmark and Historic State Site in Castroville.
And events don't stop there. The Juneteenth Festival happening from 11 a.m. to 11 p.m. The Witty Museum presenting Ode to Juneteenth, a play by Eugene Lee that begins at 11.30 a.m. There's also 2.30 p.m. and 4 p.m. at the Memorial Auditorium. And there will be a Juneteenth block party at Alamo Beer off Lamar Street. That goes from 3 p.m. to 9 p.m. for more events. All the details, just head to our website, ksat.com. Well, if you still need to get a COVID-19 vaccine, maybe the Fiesta celebrations will encourage you to do so. A mobile vaccine clinic will be available at four Fiesta events, two of them happening today. So one clinic will be at the Run to Remember from 8 a.m. to 1 p.m. Then there will be another one at the Mission Reach Flotilla Fiesta from 10 a.m. until 2 p.m. Both clinics are offering the Johnson & Johnson vaccine. And as you know, Fiesta is in full swing today. There are a lot of events going on around the Alamo City. First, Fiesta Especial Inclusion 5K and the parade in Wincrest, the women's and co-ed soccer tournament in shirts. Viva Botanica at the San Antonio Botanical Gardens. Fiesta de los Reyes at Market Square and Fiesta's Masquerade Dance 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 Party. Yes, three times the dance. If you're interested in a full list of the events, just head to kset.com. You did a little dance, dance, dance. Dance, dance, dance. There you go. Getting in the right mood. <laughs> Time now is 638, 71 degrees out. Well, Prime Day is almost here, but there are other deep. There's some details that will be happening outside of Amazon. Mm. Let me tell you how to find them still ahead. And if you're looking to adopt a pet, oh my goodness. Oh my goodness. We're checking with Mike Oster. Hey, she's going to introduce you to the perfect pup. Oh my goodness. Super, super cute. Oh, wow. Beautiful sunrise. Beautiful. 71 degrees out there. Sarah Spivey says it's going to be hot for some of those Fiesta events taking place today. She'll have her full forecast when we come back. A small ball, bamboo mallets, and horses' hooves pounding down the field. This is polo. The first sport of San Antonio played in the 1800s at Fort Sam Houston as a military training program for the cavalry. Since its inception, it's proven to be an exciting and dangerous pastime that anyone can play. And those who take part claim it's addictive. Like I'm so, I feel so free when I'm riding and playing polo and it's the coolest thing. Sonia is one of the San Antonio Polo Club's newest players and is part of the Trinity University polo team. The club underwrites Trinity and a high school team with donors and fundraisers like Fiesta Kings Cup. Since we are a charity of 501c3, the money we make for Fiesta um, tends to go a long way with us. It, it funds a lot of things throughout the whole year for our club, and we really appreciate people coming out. In fact, a ticket to Kings Cup helps to feed these horse athletes, but also funds low-cost or free riding programs for inner-city kids, and even a special polo team made up of veterans who need a little R&R. It calms us down as uh, service members, so it's very peaceful just being here at the club and just riding horses. For Frank Delgado, this has been his main medicine for a pandemic and the stress of being deployed more than a dozen times to the battlefield. Coming to San Antonio Polo Club for me when you guys first moved here was very therapeutic. Just working with the horses, being around the barn, and being around animals. And then there's this, the sport. It's an exhilarating mixture of equestrian talent, adrenaline, and skills. And one of the only pro team sports where men and women play together on an even playing field. No advantage is given, and much is gained. Being up on this big animal and interacting with all these players and people around me, like I've learned to communicate better. If you miss the ball, make the next play. And that's what it's become for me. It's not just a polo motto, it's a motto in my life. Fiesta Kings Cup returned as an official Fiesta event four years ago, but it was one of the first traditions of Fiesta a hundred years ago, played at Brackenridge Park. Today it's at Almost Basin, and you can get a ticket for the sidelines at SanAntonioPoloClub.com or at the gate on Saturday, noon to four. Wow. You may, you may even see. You may even see. Our very own Ursula Perry out there. If you there don't. we go. <laughs> All right, is today a good day to uh, play polo? Gosh, it's going to be hot. <laughs> poor horses. It's, it's hot. It's going to be hot. At Gosh. least it's not going to be muddy, you mm, know, for yeah. those horses. Good but, uh, yeah, temperatures are going to be in the mid 
90s, but it'll feel closer to 100. Good, we're, good, good, good. We're just getting started. <laughs> Summer officially starts tomorrow night, so you know it's going to be a toasty uh, season when it's already this hot outside. Now, right now, you can see the sun is rising. It's uh, 71 degrees out there right now at the airport. 68 at JBSC Randolph, 72 at Stinson, 68 Port SA, 64 Bernie Stage Airfield, 73 in Canyon Lake, 63 in Comfort, and 65 in Kerrville. Don't get used to these temperatures because it's going to get hotter and it's going to get hotter very quickly here. We're going to see temperatures rise by uh, 10 degrees just within the next hour or so. Uh, dew points are in the mid 60s and so because of that, we're going to have a heat index value today, but dew points will actually get into the 70s tomorrow and the mid 70s on Monday, and that's going to cause our heat index value to become dangerously high. By Monday, our heat index value will be anywhere from 105 to 110, and that's when your body really has a difficult time cooling off, even for us uh, South Central Texans. So just wanted to let you know that although it's going to be hot today and tomorrow, Monday is going to be exceptionally hot and we're going to have to watch out for uh, those uh, high heat index values. By the way, we still haven't hit 100 degrees officially at the airport yet this year and our average Time to hit 100 degrees is usually by the end of June, so we're not too far off a of schedule there. Now in the future cast, nothing but sunny skies today. There could be a couple of wispy cirrus clouds in the afternoon and a couple of isolated showers out near Houston, but here in San Antonio, we're going to stay dry, nothing to protect us from that sunshine. And so because of that, it's going to be hot. 102 in Del Rio, 100 in Eagle Pass, 96 in Yavaldi, 93 in Kerrville, 96 in New Braunfels, 94 for the high temperature here in San Antonio. As I mentioned earlier, that breaking news overnight, that tropical storm Claudette formed just southwest of New Orleans. You can see that on the east side of the storm, it's already producing quite a bit of rain for the panhandle of Florida, uh, Mississippi, and Alabama. Winds are sustained at 45 miles per hour. It's moving north northeast at 12 miles per hour. It's expected to make it to the Carolinas as a depression. By uh, Monday and Monday in the afternoon, it'll head back out into the Atlantic, potentially strengthening again into a uh, tropical storm, but it's a weaker system. So the main issue is the flooding that's going to be going on across those Gulf Coast states. If you have any family members out there, make sure to check on them. Uh, but here in San Antonio, we are going to be on the dry side of that system uh, and we'll stay dry until a chance for isolated rain Monday and through Tuesday when a cool front is going to move through. Now this is going to be a very weak cool front, not really cooling us down by too much, only a couple of degrees, but it is going to bring that opportunity for isolated to scattered showers and even a few storms Monday, Monday night and Tuesday uh, as that moves on through. So just a reminder today, going to be hot and humid, sunny through the afternoon, 94 for the high southeast winds at 5 to 10 miles per hour. Also this afternoon, the air quality is going to be unhealthy for those who are sensitive to it. We've got some extra ozone in the atmosphere. So if you are, have particularly bad asthma or a respiratory issue, you know who you are and the air could be a little unhealthy for outdoor activities for those who are sensitive to it. However, for the rest of us, we should be all right. Now tomorrow is Father's Day and it's going to be very similar to today, except a few more clouds, a hot and humid day for Dad's Day and looking ahead to the week. There's that chance for rain Monday uh, overnight Monday into Tuesday and then again on Tuesday only isolated to scattered possible but the chance for rain is there and yeah look that cool front cools us down by a whopping three degrees <laughs> four degrees from Monday to Tuesday <laughs> but that's a June cool front for you <laughs> it's Sarah Spivey thank you so much time now 648 71 degrees out well prime day is almost here next we tell you how to find the best deals it is puppy time here and Michelle Thorson from the Animal Defense League is joining us and this big boy too big to put up on a table or a chair. Who is this guy? <laughs> this is Charlie Bear. So Hello. Charlie Bear is one of our babies that is available for adoption at our main campus. Um, he is four years old. He's a terrier mix. So a little prematurely gray around the bus. A little premature. He's okay. an old soul, though. He's very calm, has kind of the de demeanor of an older gentleman, but he's just distinguished. <laughs> but when he sits down, he was just looking up and had just such a polite look yes, on his face. Yes, he's such a handsome, well-mannered boy. Mm -hmm. The entire car right here, he was just laying down in the back. He's such a good boy. He would be great for any home. 
long. You said he was heartworm positive, so he's on treatment for that. So he has been treated at our okay. center. Um, so with that, he just has to be kind of on limited activity for the next few months or so, mm -hmm. and then um, he has to come back to our center to get the heartworm retest in about six months or so, which ADL completely covers for anyone who's interested in adopting him. And just if you adopt him, um, just kind of take it easy for the next six months or something like that, as mm -hmm. far as you know, running around or something like that. But I'm sure he'd be comfortable on the the couch. So. Yes, absolutely. He's definitely a couch potato, um, but he gets along with any other dogs. Uh, he didn't seem reactive at all to any of the cats that we walked by, um, and he does well uh, with children too. Oh well, you're just all around great yes, guy. Yes, he's just all around great. <laughs> so everything getting back to normal at your place too, right? Yes, yes. We are really excited to actually now be open uh, as an open door facility. So appointments are no longer required if you're looking to adopt, and so that's for both of our campuses, both the Paul Jolly Center across from the zoo and our main campus on Nacogdoches. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Lots of puppies, kittens, everybody. Lots of puppies, lots of kittens, um, especially right now with our kittens. We're still in the midst of kitten season, so we have a ton of little babies that are looking for their forever homes, and we encourage everyone to come out and take a look at them. And also volunteer opportunities. Yes, we are now opening up our volunteer uh, department as well, so uh, we encourage everyone to visit our website, adltexas.org, to sign up for an orientation, and you can come and help us take care of babies like Charlie Bear. Yes, if you want to go on out there, and again, no appointments necessary, head on over. Let me think you're under Nacogdoches or the Paul Jolly Center. Give them a call, 655-1481. Thank you, Michelle. Thank you. Amazon's Prime Day, a two-day shopping palooza that has competitors getting in on the Summer Sales Act. Target has its deal days. Walmart's doing deals four days. And Best Buy, the bigger deal. On Amazon, expect the deepest discounts on Amazon's own products. The Echo Dot already nearly half off. Amazon says it will slash prices on some 2 million products from toys to tech to power tools. Overwhelmed? The best thing to do to prepare for Prime Day? Set up a wish list now or add items to your cart if you want them. That way, you can see if they're on sale when Prime Day starts. To take full advantage of Prime Day, you need to be an Amazon Prime member. If you're not, no problem. You can sign up for the free 30-day trial. Just don't forget to cancel or you'll be charged. To shop smart, experts say make a list and budget and keep an eye out for the lightning deals. They get snapped up fast, but they're 100% claimed, you can add yourself to a wait list. And if somebody else does not check out within a certain amount of time, you'll be able to jump in and get that deal at that price. Don't know if that deal really is? Free online tools like Keepa or Camel 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 will check the price history. And of course, compare prices using websites and apps like Shop Savvy. And don't be afraid of missing out. Market researcher Adobe found discounts are generally deeper Come Thanksgiving, Marilyn Moritz, KSAT 12 News. You gonna take part Prime Day? I don't know. It's gonna be dangerous. <laughs> All right, we'll play it by ear. Time now, 6:55, 71 degrees out. We'll be right back. In the news you need to know before you go, a man in critical condition this morning after being shot in the chest by a security guard at a Northside club. Here's what we know right now. Police telling us that several people in a vehicle were shooting their guns in the air and shooting them at each other in the parking lot of the Diamonds Show Club at 5 a.m. Police say the security guard for the night saw the shooting, ran out to the parking lot and began firing his own gun. The security guard shot several times at the vehicle, one of those bullets hitting the man in the chest. The driver went to Valero on South or on Starcrest and 410. That's where they called for help. The victim taken to BAMC in critical condition. That security guard detained for questioning by police. Investigators tell us that several other people were detained on the scene as well. Charges are still pending. And we actually got down into the 60s this morning. It's 68 degrees at JBSA Randolph, 69 at Port SA, 68 up in Holotus, and it's 64 at Bernie Stage Airfield. But this is as cool as it's going to get. Here's your Fiesta forecast for the day. Look at those temperatures rising. We'll be getting up to 94 for the afternoon high temperature under sunny skies. At 94, we'll feel more like 100 degrees. Sun will set at 836 tonight, and it'll still be warm. We'll only be in the upper 70s by mid night. Now looking ahead to uh, the rest of the weekend tomorrow, Father's Day should be pretty similar to today. Just a few more clouds in the mix and summer officially starts tomorrow night. Then heat index values greater than 105 possible on Monday. At the same time, Monday through Tuesday will carry a chance for isolated to scattered showers and storms. And then we're going to dry out by the end of the week. No hundreds in the forecast yet, but it's entirely possible. 
by the end of the work week. Thank you so much, Sarah. Definitely going to be hot out there for some of these yeah. Fiesta events, which our Alicia Beretta will be live at at 8 a.m. All right, we're going to take an hour-long break. We'll see you back here at 8 o'clock. Live from Case at 12, Good Morning San Antonio starts right now. Right now on GMSA at 8 a.m., gunfire at a nightclub ends with one man in critical condition this morning. We have the latest. Plus, searching for a gunman that left a family of five terrified. Details on what the suspect did after invading their home. And taking a live look out of the Alamo City, 74 degrees. We are seeing the temperature go up and up. We're going to check in with Sarah Spivey, tell you what you need to know before you head out for some of those Fiesta events. Good morning. It is 8 o'clock this morning, Saturday, June 19th. It is Juneteenth. A lot going on in and around the Alamo City. That's right. So just this week, Juneteenth was made a federal holiday in the U.S. to commemorate the emancipation of Afri African-American slaves. It is also often observed for celebrating African-American culture. Coming up in just a bit, we have a couple of events you can check out today to celebrate. For now, we can check in with Sarah Spivey. It's just going to be, we have a lot of activities going on. It is a busy weekend around San Antonio. You know, Fiesta is going on, so there's plenty of events. We have events uh, on KSAT.com that you can look at. I, I myself just saw our Weather Authority medal, so super exciting that it's uh, Fiesta time in San Antonio. Although it is going to be very hot today, so if you have any kind of plans to go out and enjoy any events, just know that it is going to be toasty. We we started off the day in the upper 60s, but already we've seen temperatures go up by about 5 degrees. It's 74 degrees, totally sunny, not a cloud in the sky, and uh, winds are calm. It's humid, too. Dew points are in the upper 60s. Now, for today's Fiesta forecast, if you're heading to downtown San Antonio, here's what you can expect. High temperatures are going to be in the 90s this afternoon, mid 90s. That's going to feel more like 100 degrees and the sun will set around 836 and it'll still be mild, still in the 80s by 10 p.m. South southeast winds at 5 to 10 miles per hour. Now, if you aren't hanging around San Antonio, perhaps you're going to want to go out to the coast uh, for Father's Day weekend. Today, just a moderate risk for rip currents and no real significant chance for rain. Waves will be about three feet and the water will be slightly choppy. Uh, tomorrow, though, Sunday, a high risk for rip currents and the water temperature both days tomorrow and uh, today and tomorrow is going to be like a bathtub, the mid 80s. So uh, enjoy your time if you're heading out to the coast. Uh, speaking of the coast, there is out in Louisiana a tropical storm to talk about. I'll have a look ahead at the forecast here in San Antonio and we'll detail the tropics coming up in a bit. Sarah. Thank you, Sarah. New this morning, a man in critical condition after police say he was shot in the chest by a security guard at a Northside club. Now, all this started when San Antonio police tell us several people were in a vehicle and they were shooting their weapons in the air and shooting them at each other. All of this in the parking lot of a Diamonds Show Club at 5 a.m. Police tell us the security guard for the nightclub saw the shooting. He ran out to the parking lot, began firing his own weapon. Security guard shot multiple times at the vehicle. One of those bullets hitting a man in the chest. The driver took off, went to the Valero on Starcrest and 410. That's where they called for help. That victim eventually taken to Bamsey and last check in critical condition. The security guard and several others involved were detained by police for questioning. San Antonio police are searching for a gunman after a family was robbed at gunpoint in their own home. Police say the incident began as a home invasion around 930 in the 12,200 block of Stadium Cove. The suspect walked into the two story home with a gun in hand and began to grab what he could, according to police. Meanwhile, the family of five inside ran upstairs to hide. Police say the suspect never went upstairs and before leaving his vehicle stood in the front yard and opened fire towards the home. One victim in his 20s was shot in the stomach, taken to the hospital in stable condition. It's unclear what items were taken and very limited information is known about the gunman at this time. Well, San Antonio police and crime stoppers asking for your help trying to find a murder suspect. So take a look. We now know the victim, 34-year-old Stephen Henderson. Now, police say he was shot and killed last Sunday while at a ranch party on Highway 16 South near Loop 410 and Somerset around 3.30 a.m. Police say dozens of people at this party when Henderson was shot and killed. If you have any information that can help police or help Crime Stoppers in this case, you are asked to call the number 210-224-STOP. All right.
right, we had to wait long enough. We finally have Fiesta back. This heat, I want to make, want to make you take a dip in the pool. Take a break from all the cascarones and all the chicken on a stick and head over to the San Antonio River to celebrate Fiesta. So happening today from 10 a.m. to 2 in the afternoon, the Mission Reach Fi Fl Flotilla Fiesta, the only kayaking event open to the public on the San Antonio River. Whoa, all right, Alicia Barrett join us live from the river with more on today's free Fiesta event. Alicia, you're not in a kayak. Not yet, Max. I'm not on the kayak yet, but I'm hoping to make my way down there to the river and get on one of those kayaks. So this event, it's really fun. It's happening from 10 a.m. till 2 p.m. So you have time to plan. We're about two hours away. Um, know that you want to park at Mission Mission County Park. So you're just going to have to cross the street walking. It's not far. Pretty easy. You can see that all the setup is happening right behind us. So with me, I have Mr. Albert Carmona. He's a special events coordinator for San Antonio River Foundation. What's the big purpose behind this fun fiesta event? So the Mission Reach Flotilla Fiesta is designed to bring people to the Mission Reach of the San Antonio River. So we're giving our community members an opportunity to be on the river um, kayaking, which is an, uh, an activity that most people don't get the opportunity yeah. to do. So being able to offer that to our community for free, because this is a free fiesta event, is something that we're really excited about. And when, and so how this works, you want to reserve a spot and after you check in, then you'll be able to choose between a leisure uh, course. So if you just want to hang out, enjoy, take some pictures, or there's also, if you want a, more of a challenge, I think this one's more for Max, obstacle course. And there's also, we know we're in the middle of a pandemic, right? So if you don't feel comfortable wearing your mask, you're not required to do so, but there's also vaccine opportunity. Yes, ma'am. Metro Health and UT Health, they have a mobile vaccination site. It is free. It's walk up. They will be giving the Johnson & Johnson shot. I believe they'll have 200 vaccinations or maybe a little more, um, but they will be here on site as well. Wonderful. Thank you so much. All right, you guys. So we're going to be here all morning long. We'll talk about what you need to bring and what perks there are coming to this free event. Reporting live, Alicia Barrera, KSAT 12 News. Thank you, Alicia. Well, did you know there's a Juneteenth flag? Well, if you want to learn more, you might want to visit the landmark and historic state site. Today, they will be hosting an educational event about the flag created in 1997 by the founder of the National Juneteenth Celebration Foundation. The event will also dive into the similarities between the Juneteenth flag and the U.S. flag. The event is today from 10 a.m. to 5 p.m. at the landmark and historic state site in Castroville. And the events don't stop there. The Juneteenth Festival continues 11 a.m. to 11 p.m. The Witty Museum presenting Ode to Juneteenth, a play by Eugene Lee. It's going on at 11.30 a.m., 2.30 p.m., and 4 p.m. at their Memorial Auditorium. And there is a Juneteenth block party at Alamo Beer off Lamar Street, 3 p.m. to 9 p.m. For more events and all the details, just head to KSAT.com. For the past 40 years, the Bonham Exchange has been a place for LGBTQ plus people and allies to express themselves freely. In honor of Pride Month, the KSAT Explains team took a deep dive into the institution's history and its lasting legacy in the Alamo City. The history made by two proud gay men here in San Antonio changed how LGBTQ plus people interacted with each other even today. At one point, the Bonham Exchange and other gay clubs in our city served as safe havens for people who had been marginalized for decades. The Bonham Exchange is personal to many of us as it was an eye-opening experience to see a place where communities collided to escape the realities of life. This week's episode explores the friendship between Arthur Hatt Veltman and Jean Elder, two great friends who met at Trinity University who would eventually create and run the LGBTQ archive called the Happy Foundation. We hope you enjoy the show and happy Pride Month from the KSAT Explains team. And KSAT Explains, the history and legacy of the Bonham Exchange is out now. You can stream it at ksat.com slash explains or on the KSAT TV app on most streaming devices. Time now is 8.09, 74 degrees out. Well, still ahead on GMSA, a country music icon is getting back into the action when you can buy tickets to see George Strait. Well, it's learning the history of San Antonio's famous oyster bake. After the break, we are getting a Fiesta flashback. So it was on KSAT.com earlier. There are so many Fiesta events happening today. 
it's also going to be sunny and hot out there, according to Sarah Spivey. She'll have our weekend forecast when we come back. This Fiesta flashback is powered by your local San Antonio area Chevy dealers. It's a Fiesta favorite, Oyster Bay. It started way back in 1916 when some St. Mary's College alumni held their annual meeting along the San Antonio River where La Mansión del Rio Hotel sits today. They moved their small party to St. Mary's campus in 1929, but it was still just a keg of beer and a barrel of oysters. Over the following decades, like a grain of sand, it became a pearl. And by 1982, it had grown into an official Fiesta event. Now, over 100 years old, Oyster Bake is one of San Antonio's most popular events, drawing in over 70,000 visitors who consume, get this, around 100,000 oysters. They're served raw, baked, or even fried, along with other local favorites. To pull all of this off, it takes 7,000 volunteers, 60 food booths, five stages, and dozens of bands. Over the years, proceeds from the two-day event have helped build the multi-million dollar St. Mary's Alumni Scholarship Endowment Fund. This is scholarship money that goes to students that need it like me. Like, I wouldn't be able to go to a four-year college. And to think, this all started as a little get-together. You know what? I got a hot take. Chicken on a stick over oysters. Ooh. No. You know what? I like it all. I mm. like oysters, but you have to have the cracker, the cocktail sauce. It's like it's way a, over my head. It's a lot of work. It's like mm. an art that goes into it. I'll yeah. be honest with you. I love good quality oysters mm -hmm. when they're raw, but you know, I also like them fried. That's fine too. I love but everything I'd pick, fried. I would pick the chicken you know. on the stick. I would, I would pick the chicken on the stick. It's easy. Oysters. It's delicious. <laughs> well, uh, I'll also pick some water this afternoon because yeah. it's very hot outside today and this entire weekend as we continue to celebrate Fiesta here in San Antonio. Outside, beautiful sunshine. Look at that. Gorgeous as we're starting our day. It looks prettier than it feels outside though, uh, because temperatures and the dew points are fairly close to each other, so we we're looking at some high humidity. It's 74 degrees outside at the airport, 78 Stenson, 69 in Bulverde, still in the 60s in some spots. We were able to get down to 69 degrees here in San Antonio, 66 in Comfort, 69 in Kerrville, 70 in Bandera, but again, the humidity is the thing that's going to get us today, okay? Dew points are in the 60s generally, which isn't necessarily at the top of our scale, but it is enough to give us a heat index value uh, and it'll really be felt this afternoon during the peak heating of the day. Speaking of the heat index, both today and tomorrow, it'll feel like 100 degrees outside. We've been dealing with that the last couple of days. However, by Monday, the humidity is going to increase to a level that will give us feel like temperatures of 105 to 110. So on Monday, we're really going to be watching out for heat advisories. I think that's entirely possible. Monday Monday is a day that it'll be very noticeably hot and humid outside, but that's skipping ahead a little bit. Let's take a look at the day today. Yeah, that's a future cast. There's just no clouds in the sky today. Maybe a few cirrus clouds, but that's about it. And a couple of isolated showers near Houston. Clouds will increase south of Highway 90 in the overnight hours so that by tomorrow we'll be experiencing some clouds in the morning hours. However, today is just going to be plain old hot 102 out in Del Rio 96 for the high in Uvalde, 96 in New Braunfels, 95 in Gonzales, and 96 in Pleasanton. Hey, if you're heading out today, just know that you're going to want to enjoy some time in the shade whenever possible. Sunny and 83 at 10, 88 and muggy at noon, 94 for the high here in San Antonio with a heat index close to 100. South southeast winds 5 to 10 miles per hour and a mild evening will still be in the 80s at 10 p.m. By the way, this afternoon uh, there is is uh, an air quality alert day, basically meaning we've got high, higher levels of ozone than usual. So in the afternoon hours, the air may be a little unhealthy for those who are sensitive to it. So people with a major respiratory issues, the rest of us are going to be just all right outside, uh, but uh, 
those of you who do experience uh, some respiratory issues know that the ozone is going to be high today. Tomorrow is Father's Day. Happy Father's Day. Almost all the dads out there. We're going to be seeing temperatures climb back up to 94 in the afternoon. A few more clouds tomorrow than today. Uh, and other than that, though, it's going to be a pretty quiet weekend. That's not the case, however, for our friends across these Gulf Coast states. Tropical Storm Claudette developed overnight bringing a lot of rainfall. That's by far the largest threat. The rainfall, Mississippi, Alabama, and the panhandle of Florida. Some spots could get up to 10 inches of rain. This is going to dissipate into a uh, remnant low, but then back out into the Atlantic by the start of next week, potentially strengthening as a tropical storm. We're going to be on the dry side of that system, but we do have a chance for rain in the week ahead. A cool front is going to move through Monday into Tuesday, and that's going to bring us a chance for isolated to scattered showers and storms Monday into Tuesday. Now we'll need that rain to cool us down because it's going to be hot on Monday. Heat index value close to 105 and even the chance for rain is fairly low in the big scheme of things. Uh, so it's going to be a nice weekend uh, to enjoy some time indoors in the AC as much as possible. <laughs> Thank you for the reminder that tomorrow is Father's Day. Yeah. Be prepared. Did you get your Everybody. gift yet? Oh, I'm working on it. Okay. <laughs> okay. Just to be clear, you got your Mother's Day gift like a month and a half okay. in advance. It's different. All right. We see how it is. <laughs> 818, 75 degrees out. Well, just ahead, Taylor Swift is re recording her red album. Oh. Details on what her version will now include. Plus, George Strait coming to Texas when you can get tickets for his next rodeo concert. We're going to explain. Good morning. Welcome back. And happy Saturday if you're a fan of George Strait. Listen up. The country music icon is going to perform at the Houston Livestock Show and Rodeo next year and his tickets, they're about to go on sale. So tickets purchases, tickets purchased will be limited to four per person and will go on sale at 10 a.m. next Thursday. That's June 24th. According to Rodeo Houston, there will be an online waiting room for tickets that will open at 930 in the morning. The concert is going to be held next year on March 20th. Ticket prices vary from $50 to $459. All right, next up we have Taylor Swift. What'd you call her? Uh, T-Swift, my girl. There you go, T-Swift, my girl. <laughs> T-Swift <laughs> announced on social media that 2012's Red is the next album she'll be re-recording. It's set to drop on November 19th. The original album had 13 songs. This one, titled Red, Taylor's version, will include all 30 songs originally meant for the album, including a 10 minute long song. Swift in the process of re-recording her earlier albums after losing the rights to her master recordings two years ago. And Diana, Diana Ross is thankful the former Supreme singer is releasing her first studio album in 15 years titled Thank You. The title track and first single dropped on Thursday. The 77 year old says the album is all about love and togetherness. Ross recorded the album in her home studio. It is set to be released in September. All right, time now is 823, 75 degrees out. Well, the USPS is honoring the science behind the exploration of the sun. Okay. We'll have a look at its new forever stamp. That's next. The Postal Service is out with a new stamp. So it is the 55 cent Sun Science Forever stamp. Say that 10 times fast. It comes <laughs> in multiple designs. The USPS says all of them highlight stunning images that honor the science behind continued exploration of our sun. They show different views of the sun and a range of solar activity observed by NASA's Solar Dynamics Observatory. It is a spacecraft that was launched in 2010 to constantly monitor the sun. Which one's your favorite? I like the, the turquoise one that says the sun solar flare. They all say that. No. Oh, no, two of no. them say that. Yeah, it's. Oh, we got a top one? Yeah, they're, they're all different, to, Max. To I like that. It's all right, pretty. I'm going top left, purple, favorite color. <laughs> Just decided. 827, 75 degrees out. Well, still ahead in our next half hour, searching for a suspected bank robber. Details on where investigators say it happened and how you can help. Plus, breaking down a body cam footage from a shooting where one man was shot and killed. We're going to explain next. Good morning. Welcome back and happy Saturday, 830 this morning, Saturday. It is June 19th. It is Juneteenth. We are also in the middle of Fiesta. There are so many events in and around the Alamo City, and it's weird having Fiesta in summer or almost it's, summer. It's hot, 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 hot. Sarah Spivey. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I like how you added a couple more hots. Just I, I could keep adding. Yeah, you just got to keep adding because it is going to be all of that hot out there today. In fact, 
we're going to have a heat index value close to 100 degrees and it's only going to get hotter from there on out. Uh, outside right now you can see the sun shining through uh, and even a little bit of haze on the horizon from some humidity out there. 74 degrees that's already up from our morning low of 69 and looking at the visible satellite imagery not a cloud in the sky around San Antonio. There are some clouds south of San Antonio near Catula and Beeville, uh, but we are going to have nothing really to protect us from that sunshine. And so these temperatures in the 70s are going to be up by about, I would say, at least 20 to 25 degrees from where they are right now in the afternoon. 72 in Hondo, 72 in Kerrville, 73 in Rock Springs. If you have any yard work that you need to get done today, now's the time to do it. Uh, because this is a look at what the temperatures are going to look like. By the way, I love that we get to use these Fiesta graphics. We're going to check in with Sarah in just a few moments. But until then, we have news to talk about right now. We begin this half hour with the search for a suspect who robbed a bank on the city's west side. So take a look. Investigators tell us the woman that you should be seeing on your screen. If not, we're going to have the story on KSAT.com. We're told the woman went inside the first convenience bank. There it is. This is the first convenience bank on Calabria near Bandera back on June 1st around 3 p.m. Police say that she made threats, demanded money from the teller, and once she got the money, she ran off. If you have any information that could lead to this woman's arrest, you're asked to call Crime Stoppers. That number on your screen, 210-224-STOP. You could be eligible for a reward of up to $5,000. San Antonio Police and Crime Stoppers also need your help finding a man who they say has violated his protective order several times. Just go ahead and take a look. This is Ryan Lee Vita Uri. He is 26 years old and has brown hair and brown eyes. Police say he is wanted for assault, bodily injury, repeated violations of court orders and assault, family choking and strangulation. If you have any information about where he might be, please call that number on your screen. That's a Crime Stoppers number 210-224-STOP. In your latest news, SAPD releasing new body camera footage of a deadly shooting from back on April 20th. The incident happened at a home off Clutter Avenue where a caller told police a man shot and killed a homeowner in a shed in their backyard. The video provided by SAPD was again introduced by an SAPD spokesperson and narrated, narrated by an officer. So the view from the body cam footage is frequently obscured because officers were taking cover as soon as they arrived in the backyard where they say the suspect, 35 year old Brian DeLeon, had a gun in his hand. Throughout the footage, officers yelled at DeLeon to quote, drop the gun or saying it's not worth it while also asking him questions about his life. SAPD officials say an officer fired the first shot after DeLeon pointed the gun in their direction but that is not visible in the video. The officers then continue to tell De Leon to drop the gun and give up before another burst of gunfire. During the exchange, one officer is heard yelling to cease fire, stop shooting. However, other officers continue. Take a look. Stop, stop, cease fire, cease fire, hold, cease fire. hold, hold, hold. He might be down. He might be down. Okay. Hold fire! Attack reload! Hold what you got. DeLeon was pronounced dead at the scene. Afterwards, the officers discovered the body of the victim. DeLeon allegedly shot 49-year-old Bobby Borrego. The incident is still under investigation. NSAPD released the edited video with narration followed by a video that was not narrated. We are still waiting for the release of the complete raw, unedited video. We have the link to watch the video right now. Just head to KSAT.com. Now to a ransomware attack on Judson ISD. District officials say they don't know what information was assessed. However, they've been able, they, they're unable to use their phones and email. Law enforcement from both state and federal agencies have been notified. In a statement, officials said in part, quote, we have also engaged independent forensic investigators and third party experts who are working around the clock in cooperation with law enforcement to determine the nature and event of the attack, end quote. The school board held a meeting yesterday morning to allow the superintendent to buy services and equipment needed to determine what was affected during the possible attack. Your morning headlines, the White House making it very clear that President Joe Biden is opposed to letting the federal gasoline tax rise at the rate of inflation. It says that it's 
to help pay for the infrastructure package that a bipartisan group of 21 senators is trying to put together. The gas tax increase, part of an early package that called for $579 billion in new spending. That spending designated for roads, bridges, rail, and public transit. Still unclear if it's going to be making the final cut. About 50 officers assigned to the Portland Police Department's crowd control team have resigned. This comes just one day after one of the team's officers was indicted for allegedly using his department issued baton to assault a protester last summer. The resignation of the police department's rapid response team took place after a grand jury charged Officer Corey Budworth with fourth degree battery. All of the officers who resigned from the crowd control team returned to the regular assignments. Well, Fiesta celebrates the heritage, history, and beauty of San Antonio, and that includes the San Antonio River. That's right. As part of Fiesta's official events, the San Antonio River Authority and SA River Foundation invite the community to Mission Reach Flotilla Fiesta. The kayaking event is free and open to the public. Our Alicia Bonetta is live there. Alicia, have you hit the water yet? A good morning. Well, not yet. I'm closer. I'm closer than I was half an hour ago. And let me tell you, the next half hour, I'm definitely getting on one of those kayaks, checked in, wristband ready. But we do have an update for you. All the slots are filled, but that doesn't mean that you need to tune me out because we have a lot of imp important information. And to talk more about that, we have the executive director for the San Antonio River Foundation, Mr. Freitas Selixson. So these events, how does it help for people to take ownership, kind of know what's going on with the San Antonio River? Sure, Alicia. Yeah, I mean, so... Yeah, the, the river belongs to all of us, right? And so these events help reconnect people to the river and bringing people down here to kayak. They start seeing things from a different perspective if you're on the water and they start noticing trash, for instance, right? And so, you know, there's a new effort to let's keep our river clean. Let's be river proud, right? And so any opportunity we have to connect people or reconnect rather, people with their river is a win-win for the river and for the, the people themselves because it's a beautiful morning it's a beautiful day to be on the river so many people in our community have never been in a kayak yeah. right and it's just so, such a fun way to enjoy your river and another thing to note that although the slots for today's kayaking event for Mission Reach Flotilla Fiesta are filled, you can still come out here, check it out, learn more about the San Antonio River, learn more about the opportunities to kayak. But most importantly, again, we are in the middle of a pandemic, so COVID-19 vaccines will be provided. And that's until what time today? Uh, so Metro Health, we're partnering with them. They'll be here till 2 o'clock offering free vaccines. We welcome anyone who wants to come on out. Although the kayaks are booked, which is a great thing, yeah. right? It means people are enjoying the river, but we will have food trucks. We'll have the vaccine sites. We'll have drinks. So come spend a beautiful day outside. It's Fiesta. That's right. It's Fiesta. So Viva Fiesta. Max, Sarah, next half hour, I promise you, I'm going to be in one of those kayaks and check out one of those obstacle courses. Back to you. Fantastic, Lisa. Can't wait for it. I love how enthusiastic he was. It's beautiful. It's Fiesta. Get out there. Enjoy the sun. All right. As you know, Fiesta events continuing to happen all over for at least the next week or so. So here's what we have in store for at least today. Fiesta Especial Inclusion 5K and Parade in Wingcrest. The Women's and Co-Ed Soccer Tournament in Shirts. Viva Botanica at the San Antonio Botanical Garden. Fiesta de los Reyes at Market Square. And Fiesta's Masquerade. You want to say it? Dance, dance, dance. Dance, dance, dance. For the full list of events, just head to ksat.com. So there you go. I can't wait. 9 a.m. We're going to see you in the kayak. Yes, I'm very excited about this. All right, 840, 77 degrees now. Well, it might be as simple as a wagging tail, but it's enough to save a life. Still ahead, how one veteran is handling her PTSD thanks to a service dog. Plus, buying a new home, more difficult as the wee months go by. Lot selling, so we're going to explain what a bidding war is and how you can win. I said earlier, it's going to be hot, hot, hot out there. According to Sarah Spivey, 77 degrees for now. She'll have our full forecast when we come back. Good morning. Welcome back and happy Saturday. Needless to say, buying a home is more difficult than ever right now. Recently, the nation, you know, we're dealing with that whole supply demand situation. So, you know, prices are skyrocketing. It's tough out there. RJ Marquez has some suggestions on what to do if you're trying to buy a new home right now. 
According to Money.com, about half of U.S. homes sold for more than their list price last month. That's put potential home buyers into bidding wars just to get the home they want. Some reports even show that some homes in Texas are selling for $100,000 or more above the asking price. The number one tip most financial experts will tell you is get pre-approved for a mortgage. This can help you figure out what you can afford. Then, shop for homes that are listed at prices below your ceiling. This way you have room to make an offer above the asking price when you do find a house that you want to bid on. And pre-approved offers can make sellers much more confident in your ability to buy. Next, one of the easiest ways to secure a bid is to make an all-cash offer. If this is something that seems out of your reach, real estate brokers say the tactic against this kind of bid is making sure you can have a bid above the asking price. So how much over should you be considering? According to Money.com, on average, homes have recently sold for 1.7% above the list price. Real estate agents say you should give your highest offer from the get-go. That's because most sellers don't like to make counter offers and just want to go with the best offer they see. Next, make sure to broaden your horizons. In such a competitive market, experts say try considering homes that need some refurbishing or look at neighborhoods or communities that are a little further from the popular areas. Finally, find an experienced real estate agent who knows about creative strategies for winning bidding wars and knows about using contingencies to protect yourself as a buyer. RJ Marcus, KSAT 12 News. So fun fact, RJ is my neighbor. We both don't own homes. Real? Oh, I didn't know he lived by you. <laughs> yeah, he does. All right, anyway, we have a pool. Is it going to be a good day to head out there? Yes, absolutely. Uh, in fact, you're going to want to find a way to stay cool today because we're going to be feeling like we're at 100 degrees this afternoon. Now, this just goes to show how quickly uh, our rain situation can change. Uh, we had a ton of rain in late April and May, and we've still had a decent amount of rain this month so far. Uh, about an inch and 81 hundredths of rainfall, but we usually see by June 19th a little bit more than two inches of rain for the month. So currently for the month, we're in a bit of a rain deficit by about a quarter of an inch or so. Now, when you look at the rainfall for the year so far, it's a prettier picture. We've seen almost 17 inches of rain, and that's a two inch surplus of rainfall. But this just goes to show we can take any bit of rain that we get and be grateful for it in these hot summer months and over the next several days we do have a couple of opportunities to see some rain. Now it's too much of a good thing too much rain for areas in Mississippi, Alabama, the panhandle of Florida and even going into Georgia throughout the rest of the day from tropical storm Claudette which just formed southwest of New Orleans in the overnight hours and this is moving very quickly at least according to a tropical storm standard north northeast at about 12 miles per hour with sustained wind at 45 miles per hour. But again, the biggest threat for these Gulf Coast states is going to be the rainfall. We here in San Antonio are going to be on the dry side of this system as it becomes a, a remnant low by Monday and then heading back out into the Atlantic. It could strengthen again into a tropical storm before dissipating over open waters. As I mentioned, we are on the dry side of this system, but our chance for rain comes Monday, Monday night and Tuesday as a weak cool front moves through uh, and I say weak cool front because it's really only going to drop our temperatures by a couple of degrees, but it is going to give us that opportunity for rain uh, Monday, Monday night and Tuesday isolated to scattered showers and storms. So not everybody is going to see rain, but the chance is there and we'll keep you informed outside right now. Nothing but sunshine uh, 74 degrees at the airport, but temperatures are warming up as we speak, and it's uh, sunny uh, with the humidity at 82%, 73 in Kerrville, 78 in Del Rio, 79 in Carrizo Springs. That's 74. We started off the day at 69, so it just goes to show you what an hour, an hour and a half of sunlight will do. It'll warm us up quickly. Uh, 74 in New Braunfels and 77 in Gonzales. The humidity is pretty high. Dew points are in the upper 60s, and that's going to give us a, a heat index today, close to 100 degrees. Tomorrow, a heat index close to 100 degrees as well. But Monday is a day that I really want us to pay attention to uh, because we're going to need to find a way to stay cool because humidity is going to be even higher. Dew points potentially in the mid 70s during the day Monday, which would mean a very high heat index feeling like 105 to 110. So today's Fiesta forecast, <laughs> we're going to if you're heading downtown, it's going to be hot uh, around noon, 88 degrees, 94 
104 for the high temperature today, but feeling more like 100. South southeast winds at 5 to 10 and the sun will set around 836. Temperatures though will still be mild. We'll still be in the 80s by about 10 o'clock. Now Father's Day is tomorrow. It's going to feel like 100 degrees in the afternoon as well. Uh, so uh, Dad probably doesn't want to do any lawn work tomorrow for multiple reasons. <laughs> now looking ahead to the week, as I mentioned, that chance for rain Monday, Monday night and Tuesday, isolated to scattered, and then we could be pushing 100 on the thermometer by Friday. A good Father's Day present. Mow the lawn either late tonight or mm. early, early morning. Actually, maybe don't want to wake people up early morning, so. Time out. <laughs> so you're telling people to do this. Is this your present to your dad? No, 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 no. Oh, okay, no, you would no, never. No, no, I would never. All right, time <laughs> now is 849, 78 degrees out. Well, a local organization is working to help veterans who suffer with mental health issues after the break, how you can get help for someone you know going through the same thing. So many men and women in our community have served in the military and life after service can be a huge adjustment. A lot of veterans suffer from PTSD. That's where the nonprofit organization Canines for Warriors likes to step in. Each year they provide service dogs to nearly 700 vets, just like Shiloh Schluterman. She says after her last return from deployment, she wasn't the same and was diagnosed with post-traumatic stress disorder. She says she tried several medications and therapies, but nothing was really working until she was introduced to Canine for Warriors, who provided her a service dog for her PTSD. That bond with him that was created there, I can't even explain. It was like an instantaneous thing that like he knew me better than I knew myself. So adorable. So Shiloh and her canine Javelin have been together for six years. Throughout all these years, Shiloh describes her improved mental health as remarkable for veterans interested in getting their own service dog. Canines for Warriors and Petco Love will be bringing a new facility to San Antonio right next to the Animal Care Services. They are set to make their debut. Cute faces just like that this coming fall. I love that. Love that. Javelin walked the stage with her too. Yeah, Way adorable to go, Javelin. pups. Great for the community. Fantastic. Time now, 854, 78 degrees out. Rosie the Riveter is headed to space along with flags of 14 historically black colleges and universities. We'll explain next. Good morning and welcome back. Rosie the Riveter headed to space. Boeing announced it is sending a batch of commemorative Rosie coins to the International Space Station on board its CST 100 star liner. The coins honor the nearly 19 million American women who worked in the aerospace industry as men fought in World War II. Also part of the well, there you go. Look at that. Those awesome pictures. So flags of 14 HBCUs as well as small pennants and other items representing the schools. There's going to be over 700 pounds of cargo flying and they are set to take flight July 30th. That is so awesome. Fantastic. All right. Time now. 857. 78 degrees out. Well, are you ready for the rising cost of trying to keep your house cool this no, summer? <laughs> no, no. Not. Still ahead. The U.S. Department of Energy says you what you can do right now to save as much as 10% a year. Fiesta is in full effect and we know it's hot, 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 hot. But just ahead on GMSA, stick around because we're talking about a free family friendly event that's sure to cool you off. Two people and a juvenile arrested in connection to a robbery and a chase. We have the latest details from police. And if you're going to be out and about this weekend, there are some road closures you need to be aware of. We'll tell you where those closures are happening. And taking a live look out of the Alamo City, already 79 degrees to start your Saturday morning. We're going to check in with Sarah Spivey, see what the rest of the day is going to look like. Good morning. It is 9 o'clock this Saturday, June 19th. It is Juneteenth. It is also Fiesta. We started the morning. I think we dipped into the 60s at one point. We did? Yeah, we did. There we go. Thank oh. you. I didn't think I was a crazy person. <laughs> Max, Max is the better student. <laughs> yeah, where you've been. <laughs> uh, earlier, we were talking about how if you want to mow the lawn, 
you'll want to do it early in the morning. Uh, and especially because this afternoon temperatures are going to soar into the low to mid 90s, but the heat index value will be close to 100 degrees today. Uh, so uh, here's a look at temperatures right now. 80 in New Braunfels. It's already nearly 80 in San Antonio. We did start off the day at 69 degrees, but just a couple of hours of sunshine here have already risen the temperature by 10 degrees. It's 81 in Del Rio, 80 in Catula, 79 in Carrizo Springs. This is the time that if you have any strenuous outdoor activities, do them now because this is what it's going to feel like in the afternoon. Feeling close to 100 degrees around San Antonio and Pleasanton, as well as near Hondo, New Braunfels, and Gonzales, 102 in Del Rio, uh, and 100 in Laredo. Now, it is a fiesta weekend. If you are wanting to get outside and enjoy some time with those fiesta festivities, bring some extra water. Stay in the shade as much as possible. You'll be just fine. And it, it feels great to put up the Fiesta graphics after not using them for a year and a half, two years here. So a 94 today for the high, hot and sunny. A little more clouds tomorrow for Father's Day, but it'll still be humid and toasty with another uh, high temperature near 94, 95 degrees. Coming up in the forecast, we're going to talk about Tropical Storm Claudette, which is bringing a lot of rain to some of the Gulf Coast states. And we'll talk about our rain chances, which are there in the week ahead in just a few minutes. Sarah and Max. Thank you, Sarah. New this morning, three people in custody after an armed robbery and a chase. Police arrested these two men on your screen and a 15 year old after a robbery yesterday afternoon. Investigators say Guillen and a 15 year old forced their way into a home. Guillen using a weapon to demand the victim's property. They then ransacked the home, taking multiple pieces of property. Detectives were able to track a phone that was stolen to a house. That is where three suspects were found. And that's when the three tried to drive off. Police called in the helicopter. They were able to track down the suspect's vehicle. All three suspects were arrested. Well, new this morning, a man is in critical condition this morning after being shot in the chest by a security guard at a Northside club. San Antonio police say several people in a vehicle were shooting their guns in the air and at each other in the parking lot of Diamond Show Club at five this morning. Police say the security guard saw the shooting and ran out to the parking lot and began firing his own gun. The security guard shot several times at the vehicle, striking a man in the chest. Police say the driver drove to the Valero on Star Crescent 410, and that's where he called for help. He was taken to Bamsey in critical condition. Charges are pending. Well, big news if you plan to be out and about this weekend. Some road closures you should be aware of. Work on 281 in northern Bear County continuing this weekend. All part of improvements by Texas, Texas Department of Transportation. There's going to be nightly closures at the intersection of the Borgfeld Road and 281 running through Monday. Monday, June 28th. Also today, sidewalk improvements will close one southbound lane of 281 at Overlook Parkway. Now, road work will resume Sunday night on Loop 1604 on the northwest side. All part of that major expansion project. Drivers should expect overnight lane closures between Houseman Road to Babcock Road and from Babcock Road to I-10 as crews strip the lanes and set down barriers. Well, get your resume ready if you are in the hospitality industry and you're looking for a job. Listen up. Visit San Antonio is hosting a job fair next week to help hotels, restaurants and venues fill hundreds of job openings. There will be more than 25 businesses looking to hire from entry level to temporary to full time positions. The event is happening at the Alamo Dome next Wednesday from 10 a.m. to 2 p.m. For more information on how to sign up, just visit KSAT.com. Well, today is Juneteenth, and there are several events going on in the Alamo City. The Juneteenth Festival happening from 11 a.m. to 11 p.m. The Witty Museum presenting Ode to Juneteenth. It's a play by Eugene Lee. That's happening at three separate times today, 11.30 a.m., 2.30 p.m., and 4 p.m., all at their Memorial Auditorium. And there will be a Juneteenth block party at Alamo Beer just off Lamar Street, 3 p.m. to 9 p.m. If you want more information on these events or details, just head to KSAT.com. We also know we are in the midst of Fiesta and a couple things that we didn't even really know about. Paddling and kayaking, put it on the Fiesta to-do list. Today, the San Antonio River Authority, SA River Foundation, partnering to host Mission Reach Flotilla Fiesta. So this is a kayaking event and it's designed to bring awareness to the waterway and provide an afternoon of free fun. Our Alicia Barretta is live from Mission County Park Trailhead with the details. Alicia, you in the water yet? That's great. 
Look at that. Nah. Showing off skills. Woo! Okay, oh, get it, girl. Made it, you guys. <laughs> and I've been paddling for quite some time. All right, so this is part of the obstacle course. Obstacle course. I'm going to try to make it through these two alligators, crocodiles. And this is all part, oh my gosh, I'm going to crash into one. Part of the Mission Reach Flotilla Fiesta. And we talked about it. It's full now. Hundreds of people are going to make it out here today. We're just going to turn around here so we can keep talking about this. Whew. So I heard Max was on the rowing team back at his university. Um, I'll challenge you, Max. <laughs> I think you got me beat. This is impressive, Alicia. Yeah. Thank yeah. You. I don't know if I'm doing this right. I'm definitely not dressed appropriately, but whatever. <laughs> oh my gosh, here we go. Finish I line, finish line. To go got under it. That? Wow. Yes. Good job, yeah. Alicia. Yeah, you go under it, you guys. You so that. obviously, events like these just help the community to find out more and just be aware of how beautiful our river is, that there are activities like this one available to take part in. But also, we've talked about it during the storms. We saw a lot of trash piling up. And you guys, we each have to be accountable for our actions. If we see a piece of trash, we pick it up because it does end up on the waterways. Now, if you're on the edge of your seat because you think I'm going to fall over, I was told that with this kayak, you really, in order for you to fall into the water, you really were looking for it. So this is a pretty steady one. So again, uh, this event is full, but there are so many opportunities throughout the year, every weekend, for for you to come out here with your families. Life jackets are required and it's just a lot of fun. We're gonna be tanning out here this morning. So you guys, I didn't fall in there and I'm not gonna go all the way. The obstacle course kind of goes around the corner here. You can't really see the end, but you go through these little obstacles here and then around these floaties. And then at the end you ring a cowbell, but then you have to make it back and go through the finish line. So you saw me for a little bit, but Max, Sarah, too. Sarah is sporty, so you guys, athletic. Sa yeah, no, Down? Sarah's already challenging us at the desk. I, I'm not. This is, you were doing the whole. I, you know what? Thing. I, want, I want to see you ring the cowbell next live shot. Cowbell. We need more cowbell. We need more cowbell, okay. Alicia. Challenge. Challenge accepted, you guys. Stick around. Next time. Well done, Alicia. Good job, Alicia. Fantastic. All right, time fun. now at 9.08, 79 degrees out. I think you're challenging her. I was not. I don't okay. know. Max is making up things. Peloton is warning users about being at risk of getting hacked. We have the details still ahead in our next half hour. And today is an ozone action day. Next on GMSA, some things you can do to reduce pollution. Max, you were the one challenge, Alicia. I would never. <laughs> 79 degrees, Alicia looking great out there in the heat. All right, it's going to be a hot weekend. Sarah Spivey has her full forecast when we come back. Good morning, welcome back and happy Saturday. Today is an ozone action day here in the Alamo City and that means that there could be high levels of ozone air pollution in our area. So on ozone action days, officials recommend that children, the elderly and those with respiratory problems such as asthma should limit their time outdoors. Let's take a look at some things you can do to reduce pollution today. Refueling cars and trucks after 6 p.m. All right, avoid using drive throughs Set air conditioner thermostats to a higher temperature if possible, carpooling or using public transportation. We have a full list of some of these, you know, helpful tips. Just head to KSAT.com. And you know, it's really only a, a, the afternoon, uh, the peak heating of the day that you see major problems with uh, ozone during mm -hmm. ozone action days. And even then, it's just unhealthy for those that are sensitive to mm -hmm. it. And so, people usually know, yeah, like, hey, this is my limit. Exactly. Most kids are fine. Most older people are fine. It's just those with respiratory issues that uh, we have to pay attention to. And that's exactly uh, the case today. The forecast air quality for the afternoon is expected to be unhealthy for those who are sensitive to it. Uh, and the ozone is going to be high just because the way we have our atmospheric setup today, high pressure system in place, kind of traps all those pollutants closer to the ground. And that's why we're a little concerned about that air quality this afternoon. But it looks great outside right now. Totally sunny, 79 degrees. Winds are calm. Dew points are in the upper 60s. So humidity is pretty high out there too. You can feel the humidity out there. Uh, 76 in comfort, so not entirely comfortable in comfort. 78 in Tarpley, 77 in Hondo. Already 80 degrees at JBSA 
Randolph 81 at Stenson 80 in New Braunfels and 77 in Canyon Lake this morning. Now dew points have actually risen over the last couple of hours uh, from the mid 60s to the upper 60s near 70 degrees. That's oppressively humid and that's what's going to give us a heat index value today. Today our high temperature is forecast to be 94, but it'll feel like 100 degrees. Similar story tomorrow for Father's Day and Monday especially. Very high humidity on Monday, higher temperatures on Monday. That's going to give us a dangerous heat index value of 105 or greater on Monday. So at least our heat index value isn't going to be that high on this weekend, but we still will have to take those heat precautions that we're so used to taking here in South Central Texas. Showing you the future cast right now, and you can see that it'll be sunny today, uh, but after 5 p.m., clouds are going to increase south of Highway 90, and these clouds are actually going to make it to San Antonio tomorrow for Father's Day. So Father's Day is actually going to be mostly cloudy, uh, but we'll still have enough sun to warm us up tomorrow for Father's Day. High temperatures well above the triple digits out in Del Rio, uh, 100 degrees in Eagle Pass for the high, 100 in Laredo, low 90s for the Hill Country, but again, still a high heat index value. And around San Antonio, will be in the mid 90s, 83 at 10, 88 at noon, muggy all day, 94 for the high temperature, 5 p.m. And it's that afternoon time frame that would be the higher uh, issue for air quality if we see that today. And mild in the evening, 82 only at noon and tomorrow is Father's Day. This lucky father got three ties there. Max would like some ties. Uh, all right, 90. 94 for the high temperature tomorrow for Father's Day as well. We're going to have uh, mostly cloudy skies and it'll already be hot by noon, close to 90 degrees already by noon. We've been tracking very carefully what is now Tropical Storm Claudette. For about a week, it just meandered in the Gulf of Mexico and was unorganized, but it became organized. It became a tropical storm just southwest of New Orleans. It's been moving across Louisiana. It's dumping a lot of rain across Alabama right now in Mississippi, as well as the Panhandle of Florida. Those are the areas that are going to have the biggest risk for flooding today, potentially up to 10 inches of rainfall when all is said and done. This is going to move to the north and to the east out into the Gulf. Uh, pardon me, out into the Atlantic by Tuesday, potentially restrengthening into a tropical storm. And then in our week ahead, we are going to have a chance for rain Monday. Monday night and Tuesday as a weak cool front moves through. It's not going to be widespread rainfall. Instead, the rain will be isolated to scattered 30 to 40 percent chance Monday, Monday night and Tuesday. But we'll take any little bit of rain we can get. That cool front, by the way, only cools us down by four degrees from Monday into Tuesday. Uh, but at least it gives us a chance for rain. It'll be near 100 by Friday. Every degree cooler counts. Yeah, and I'm hoping to get the pollen count in soon so that way we can show that before the end of the show. Thank you, Sarah. Thank you, Sarah. 916, already 80 degrees. All right, so do tickets last forever? A lady in Boston thought they did. Still ahead, how she tried to get into the aquarium with that ticket and how old it is. And as Sarah was saying, we're going to be feeling what seems like 100 degree temperatures. So what does that mean for your bills for the AC next on GMSA? What you can do to cut some costs. Good morning, welcome back and happy Saturday. Parts of the United States have been experiencing sweltering summer like temperatures. Yep, and now it's time to make changes to help keep those rising electric bills a bit lower as your air conditioner gets a workout. RJ tells us how. Credit.com recently took a look at how to save money while staying cool. You can start by upgrading your windows to more energy efficient models and look for leaks or cracks on the seals to the windows. Plugging those and weather stripping windows can keep more of that cool air in. Programmable thermostats will adjust temperatures while you're away from the house or asleep, and that cuts down on your energy use. The U.S. Department of Energy estimates you can save as much as 10% a year by adjusting the temperature, and a programmable thermostat automates the process. And make sure you're changing the filter on your HVAC system as needed. A dirty air filter makes the system work harder to circulate the air. And if possible, cook outdoors. Running the oven or even stovetop cooking generates heat. RJ Marcus, KSAT 12 News. Speaking of cooking outdoors, there's an awesome uh, fundraiser barbecue near uh, Canyon Lake today. So there you go. All right, we want to remind you, both the city of San Antonio and Bear County opening several cooling centers in an effort to help residents beat the heat. For all the lists of the centers and their hours of operation, just head to KSAT.com. In addition, VIA now offering rides to those centers 
call 311 for more information. All right, so what do you usually keep the thermostat up? Um, 78 during the day. Yeah. I can function That's like what that. I do. All right. Doesn't bother me. Time now, 921, 80 degrees out. Well, do all tickets expire? Mm. So a woman tried her luck in getting into the aquarium in Boston with a very, very old ticket. Uh, what the staff did at the aquarium and how old that ticket was. Mm. Good morning and welcome back. Who doesn't love a good customer service story? A woman going to the New England Aquarium in Boston, hoping to get in with a very old gate ticket. And by old, we mean 38 years old. She got it back in 1983. The ticket said, quote, you have arrived too late to fully enjoy our facilities. Oh. This ticket is good for admission at any time in the future, end quote. Well, any time turned out to be in 2021. All right, so even though the late gate tickets were discontinued about 25 years ago, the aquarium actually honored it. The woman said her great aunt gave her two of those tickets and she promised that she would try to use them. She says the aquarium ticket office keeping the other one as a memento. That is such a great story. Yeah. And it is, it's like history for them. So Absolutely. they can frame it up there. And you know what? Good for the aquarium letting them in too. I know. Huh. Good team players. All right, 925, 80 degrees out. Well, Alaska Airlines is celebrating pride with a new plane. We have that story next in our next half hour. And President Biden marks vaccine milestone 300 million doses in 150 days since he took office. But will his goal of getting to 70% by the 4th of July still happen? We'll explain next. Good morning, welcome back and happy Saturday. Just about 9.30 this morning. It is June 19th, it is Juneteenth, and we are also in the midst of Fiesta, like we've been saying out throughout the morning. We're so used to it being a few months earlier. I know, it's, it's weird because we always have it in April mm -hmm. and it just like the weather feels great outside usually in April. And now it's like Fiesta and you're like, wait, I'm going to be outside all day and it's hot, Sarah. <laughs> yeah, even if you're outside for a couple of hours this afternoon, you are going to need to find some shade at some point and make sure to drink plenty of water. Uh, it is going to be a fun day though downtown for a lot of folks as we continue to celebrate Fiesta. Here's a look at today's Fiesta forecast at noon will already be at 88 degrees at a uh, 292 and at 594 for the high temperature, although that 94 is going to feel a lot hotter. I'll show you uh, the future cast heat index values. Sun will set around 836 and even then temperatures are going to struggle to cool down all that much. We'll still be in the 80s by 10, but this is a look at the potential uh, future heat index. I think we could even be a couple of degrees or feeling a couple of degrees warmer than that 98, feeling closer to 100 in San Antonio this afternoon. Uh, and this heat is just not going to quit. Coming up in the forecast, we're going to talk about how hot it's going to be over the next few days. You're going to need to find a way to stay cool. Maybe you want to head down to Port A or Corpus Christi for this Father's Day weekend. Just know that the rip current risk is going to be pretty high tomorrow on Sunday. And also there's a small chance for rain on Sunday. Other than that, though, the beaches should be just fine if you want to take a trip down to the coast. Speaking of the tropics, Tropical Storm Claudette did develop in the overnight hours, so we'll talk about that and what we can expect here in San Antonio as far as heat and rain chances go in the week ahead. Sarah and Max. Thank you, Sarah. New this morning, San Antonio police searching for a gunman after a family was robbed at gunpoint at their own home. So police tell us the incident all started as a home invasion around 930 last night in the 12,200 block of Stadium Cove. Now, we're told the suspect walked into the two story home with a gun and began to grab what he could. Meanwhile, the family of five inside ran upstairs to hide. The suspect never went upstairs, but stood in the front yard firing several gunshots towards the home before finally leaving. One person was shot in the stomach, taken to the hospital. Still unclear what exactly was taken. This investigation still ongoing. All right, now to the latest in the pandemic here in the United States. We are reaching a major milestone, 300 million doses administered in just the one, first 150 days of the Biden administration, with 65% of Americans getting at least one dose. But the nation is unlikely to reach the president's goal of 70% vaccinated by July 4th. ABC's Christine Sloan has a story. President Biden making a push to get Americans vaccinated this Father's Day weekend and with just two weeks until the July 4th holiday. We're going to celebrate our independence from the virus as we celebrate our independence of our nation. 
300 million shots have been administered in the first 150 days of the Biden administration. But officials say the U.S. is likely to miss Biden's goal of 70 percent of U.S. adults with at least one shot by Independence Day. The country's hovering around 65 percent right now, according to the CDC. Vice President Kamala Harris in Atlanta talking about the importance of getting a shot at a pop-up vaccination site at the historic Ebenezer Baptist Church. You love yourself, you love your family, you love your community. Help us get the word out. Some parts of the country are now seeing a rise in COVID cases. At least five states with increases of nearly 40 percent or more in the past two weeks. The rise in cases attributed in part to the lack of vaccinations. I am still putting patients on life support machines because they're non-vaccinated and becoming very ill. The president urging vaccinations amid a growing threat from the Delta variant. It's a variant that is more easily transmissible, potentially deadlier, and particularly dangerous for young people. In Florida, officials closing a county administration building for the weekend after an outbreak of COVID-19 among workers. Two people have died. Meantime, Canada is extending the closure of its border with the U.S. until at least July 21st. Christine Sloan, ABC News, New York. Well, today is Juneteenth. It is now a federal holiday. This year marks the 156th anniversary of Juneteenth, the day enslaved Texans were officially proclaimed free, and it was two and a half years after the Emancipation Proclamation of 1863. Here in San Antonio, we have an entire Juneteenth commission, and tomorrow on Leading SA at 8 a.m., we speak with Assistant City Manager David McCary to talk about the meaning of Juneteenth here in the Alamo City, the, pro the progress of the holiday over the last year, and what comes next. Well, this heat will make you want to take a dip in the water, take a break from the cascarones and chicken on a stick, and head over to the San Antonio River to celebrate Fiesta. I don't know. You could put chicken on a stick, bring it on with you in a kayak. I agree. All right, so happening today from 10 a.m. to 2 p.m. in the afternoon, the Mission Reach Flotilla Fiesta, the only kayaking event open to the public on the San Antonio River. Alicia Barrera, join us live from the river with more on the event. Alicia, how's it going out there? Alicia, <laughs> did you reach the cowbell? Oh, my goodness. Need more cowbell. I'm about to, Sarah. <laughs> I'm about to show you that I can do this. So as I row myself over there, I'm going to fill you all in. So the Mission Reach Flotilla Fiesta is full, you guys. It's already reached its max capacity online, but that's okay because we can still have fun by watching me in case I fall in the water, but no negative vibes because we don't want that. So this is part of the obstacle course. There's an obstacle course route, and then there's just a leisure. If you just want to hang out, take some pictures, but if you want to get a workout in before you go eat more chicken on the stick, then here we go. Here's your chance. All right. So the point is to get to my left over here. We're going to do this. Sarah, I'm going to do this. Yes, you can. Oh my gosh. You can do it, Sarah. I mean, Alicia. Okay. <laughs> there we go. You hear it? Oh, oh, my God. oh no. Oh, yeah. San Antonio River Authority. Alicia. I'm so sorry. Oh, oh my gosh. Alicia. <laughs> Oh my God, <laughs> San Antonio River Authority, I am so sorry. Please, please send me an invoice for the cowbell because I just ruined y'all's obstacle course and there is no way. Now I have to go like do the row of shame to tell them what I've done. And I'm just laughing out of nervousness, you guys. They're standing right behind oh Steven over there. Like, oh my goodness, that's fantastic. <laughs> Too much cowbell. We're just, you got it, though. You, Alicia, you did it, you girl. You crossed the finish line. Yeah. Well done, Alicia. Good yeah. job, Alicia. I don't worry. It. I ruined it for the other people. You don't want to dive into here. the river and But I'm sure you and, and find that it? they will. <laughs> no. <laughs> no. <laughs> yep, fair. <sighs> well, Alicia, you're doing, you're doing great shock, out there. you guys, but. I just ruined it for everyone. But you guys, the point was to show you that it can be done again. Uh, the River Foundation, uh, I'm so sorry. We'll figure it out. We'll find a we'll find a end point for you guys. But the point is that this raises awareness. And I think we've done it today. Max, Sarah, back to you. I think uh, we definitely did Alicia, that. also shout out to her photographer, Steven, who's like in the brush. Oh, yeah. Trying to uh, shoot Alicia and yeah. stuff. So great job out there, team. Yeah. Good live shot. All right, today, including, you know, the river and what used to be a cowbell. A lot of <laughs> other Fiesta events going on in and around the Alamo City. 
First Fiesta Especial Inclusion 5K and Parade in Wincrest, the women's and co-ed soccer tournament in shirts. Viva Botanica at the San Antonio Botanical Garden. Fiesta de los Reyes at Market Square. And Fiesta's Masquerade. Dance, dance, dance. Dance, dance, dance party for a full list of the events. Just head to KSAT.com. We love Fiesta. We do. All right, 938, 81 degrees out. Well, now you not only need to worry about being healthy, but also about being hacked. Oh. Why Peloton is warning its users about hackers. That's next. And as we saw with Elise out there in the river, it is hot out there. The sun is out. It is already 81 degrees. What does the rest of the day look like? We're going to check in with Sarah Spivey in just a bit. In your morning consumer headlines, Peloton is warning about all its users about a security risk on the Bike Plus touchscreen. That's right. So cybersecurity company McAfee released a report showing how hackers could interfere with your Peloton's operating system. The threat most likely affects bikes in public spaces like hotels and gyms, since hackers would need to be physically there to deliver any malicious codes. Once the code is there, Peloton users could be spied on through the bike's camera and microphone. All right, once again though, the hacker actually needs to have physical contact with the bike. They could install apps that look like Netflix or Spotify and steal your login info. Now Peloton did release a mandatory software update to fix any existing issue. Alaska Airlines is going the extra mile to celebrate Pride Month. The company debuted its Pride plane this week. All right, so the aircraft showing off those rainbow decals. Now, Take a look. It has fly with pride on the side of this Airbus A320. The airline is also featuring Pride Month movie and TV selections, including classics like Milk and Cabaret. All right. Well, back here at home, already 81 degrees out there, Sarah Spivey. We dipped into the 60s for yeah. a couple minutes. Just briefly. <laughs> we dipped into the 60s this morning before the sun rose. Now, as you can see on that bug down there, we're already at 81 degrees. Now, promise the pollen count. Molds are low and pigweed and grass are low as well. Molds have gone up a little bit from yesterday, but still in the low category. So even though it's going to be hotter than heck, we're still going to see a pretty nice pollen count out there. Uh, now, I mentioned before the break that we're continuing to tra uh, track Tropical Storm Claudette, uh, which is currently uh, north of New Orleans in Mississippi, so kind of near the Hattiesburg area. That's where uh, Claudette is at the moment. It is weakening. Uh, it, winds are now down by about 5 miles per hour to 40 miles per hour. Even though the winds can gust up to 50 miles per hour and there's the potential for some tornadoes on the east side of this, the biggest concern with Claudette for the Gulf Coast states is going to be the flooding uh, because of heavy, heavy rains that are currently falling over Mississippi, Alabama, the panhandle of Florida, and now starting to get into Georgia. Uh, now, Claudette is expected to weaken throughout the day today, uh, but it could potentially re-strengthen to tropical storm status before it heads back out into the Atlantic as it moves into the Carolinas by Monday morning. That's the latest update on Claudette. We are going to be on the dry side of that system and really our chance for rain is going to come Monday, Monday night and Tuesday as a weak cool front is going to move through. I say a weak cool front because it's really only going to drop our temperatures by a couple of degrees. So we're still going to be in the 90s, but it is going to bring that potential for some isolated to scattered rain Monday, Monday night and Tuesday. Meanwhile, today is just going to be a hot and toasty day. Uh, outside right now, not a cloud in the sky. 79 degrees at the airport. Winds are calm, so we don't even have a breeze to help us out right now. 80 in New Braunfels, 82 in Pleasanton, 82 in Carrizo Springs, and 81 in Del Rio. But this is as cool as it's going to get all day. Even by midnight, we're still going to be near 80 degrees. Uh, high humidity, too. Dew points are in the upper 60s. Now, they'll mix down a little bit into the afternoon, but it's still going to be enough to give us a heat index value today of close to 100 degrees. Similar story tomorrow for Father's Day. But by Monday, humidity and the temperature are going to increase. And so that's going to give us a dangerous heat index value of 105 to 110. We've yet to have a heat advisory here in San Antonio this season. 
But if we were to get one, I think Monday would be a day uh, that we would see a heat advisory. Of course, Fiesta is also going on right now at downtown. If you'd like to head downtown and enjoy those Fiesta festivities today, bring some water, find some shade, uh, and just enjoy that time that we've been missing the last two years, seeing Fiesta for the first time in San Antonio in a while. 88 at noon, 94 for the high temperature in San Antonio, uh, and it'll feel closer to 100. Sun will set around 836, and tomorrow is Father's Day, so a lot going on this weekend. A little more cloud cover on Father's Day, but it'll still be a hot one. 94 once again for the high, feeling like 100 south southeast winds at 5 to 10 miles per hour. There are chances for rain, isolated Monday, scattered Monday night, isolated on Tuesday, and temperatures, as I mentioned, only going to drop by a couple of degrees with that cool front. 92 for the high, and then we'll be back to 100 degrees by Friday. All right, Sarah Spivey, thank you so much. 946, already 81 degrees though. Well, did you know that there's a Juneteenth flag? We will tell you where you can learn about it next. And let's take a look out at the roadways. We know there are so many events in and around the Alamo City. We have Juneteenth events, we have Fiesta events. So if you are out and about today, make sure to drive safe, be smart. Take a look at those lottery numbers. Pick three, six, four, four, fireball seven, daily four, seven, four, eight, six, fireball nine. And your cash five, five, 12, 25, 28, 30. Mega millions you play? No, I didn't. Uh, wasn't, wasn't enough for you? Wasn't high enough. Oh, <laughs> All right, Mega Millions, 14, 36, 44, 46, 53, big number 18, Mega Pyre 2. Good luck. We'll be right back. This Fiesta flashback is powered by your local San Antonio area Chevy dealers. It's a Fiesta favorite, Oyster Bay. It started way back in 1916 when some St. Mary's College alumni held their annual meeting along the San Antonio River where La Mansión del Rio Hotel sits today. They moved their small party to St. Mary's campus in 1929, but it was still just a keg of beer and a barrel of oysters. Over the following decades, like a grain of sand, it became a pearl. And by 1982, it had grown into an official Fiesta event. Now, over 100 years old, Oyster Bake is one of San Antonio's most popular events, drawing in over 70,000 visitors who consume, get this, around 100,000 oysters. They're served raw, baked, or even fried, along with other local favorites. To pull all of this off, it takes 7,000 volunteers, 60 food booths, five stages, and dozens of bands. Over the years, proceeds from the two-day event have helped build the multi-million dollar St. Mary's Alumni Scholarship Endowment Fund. This is scholarship money that goes to students that need it like me. Like, I wouldn't be able to go to a four-year college and to think, this all started as a little get-together. Well, did you know there's a Juneteenth flag? If you want to learn about it, you might want to visit the Landmark and Historic State site. Today, they will be hosting an educational event about the flag. It was created in 1997 by the founder of the National Juneteenth Celebration Foundation. The event will also dive into the similarities between the Juneteenth flag and the U.S. flag. It's a look at history that maybe not everyone is fully aware of. I know when I was growing up, I didn't learn about Juneteenth in school. I learned about it as an adult, and that's part of why I'm so fascinated with how the history of the last enslaved people in the United States um, bears on my life and the life of everyone else. The event is happening today from 10 a.m. to 5 p.m. at the Landmark and Historic State Site in Castroville. All right, time now is 9.52, 82 degrees out. Well, tomorrow is the day we celebrate our dads. That's why tomorrow on GMSA, we tell you ways that dads can positively impact their daughters. In the news you need to know before you go, a man in critical condition this morning after being shot in the chest by a security guard at a club on the north side. San Antonio police tell us several people were in a vehicle shooting their guns up in the air and shooting at each other in the parking lot of the Diamonds Show Club at 5 a.m. Police say the security guard for the nightclub saw the shooting, ran out to the parking lot and began firing his own weapon. The security guard shot several times at the vehicle, striking a man in the chest. The driver took off, went to Valero on Starcrest and 410. That's where they called for help. The victim, who was shot in the chest, taken to Bamsey at last check in critical condition. Charges are still...
One last check of the pollen count and temperatures are rising. We are currently seeing molds, pigweed and grass low, so that's some good news, but it's already 82. That's after we started at 69, so you know it's going to be a hot weekend. Here's a look at the weekend forecast. Put the Fiesta background on there for you. 94 and toasty with the heat index value both days, both today and Father's Day, close to 100 degrees. We're going to see a chance for rain Monday, isolated overnight Monday to Tuesday, more scattered in nature and isolated again on Tuesday. But we can't escape the heat and we probably won't until October. It's going to be close to 100 degrees by Friday. All right, can't escape the heat, and we are in the midst of Fiesta, so obviously if you are out and about, well, it's still my thunder. We have a special guest in the studio, David Elder, joining us this morning. David Elder. It's been about three months, David. It's we been missed three you. months, y'all. Three months. Welcome but I'm back. glad I'm glad to be back. Mm -hmm. I was traveling all over Texas, eating some good food, but now I'm back. And now we're having fun. It is a brand new episode of Texas Eats Today. Right, it's coming up just a couple minutes, and you gotta watch to win. We have a canopy hotel, one night stay, staycation, fiesta giveaway from Texas Eats. Whoa. It's a long title, okay? But here we go. A one night stay from Canopy Hotel, $100 to the Domingo Restaurant, Pinkerton's Barbecue, Hello Paradise, the Cortez Family Restaurants, Holy Smoke Food Truck, El Camino, the new Riverwalk Bar and Food Truck Park, plus $50 to Tito's Mexican Restaurant. Holy moly, that Whoa. is a lot of giveaways. Add it all up, baby. I did the math like five <laughs> times to make sure. It's you did the plus, math? You I did the math. math. Right. It's 1K giveaway, okay? Now, the instructions are that you have to watch the show, because you got to get the secret words, so you got to watch the whole show, and I guarantee you, you're not going to figure it out. Secret. I've done other secret words, and people figure them out early. You're not going to figure this one out because it's actually <laughs> two words you don't even know. But you have to go onto Instagram, Elder Eats, and you have to go on there, follow all the rules because you still have to like the post. And right there, Elder Eats and KSAT Texas Eats, and then you have to like the post, tag up to four friends, mm -hmm. and then you can enter to win. Okay, so I'm thinking you said two words, so it's not show me your shoes. <laughs> <laughs> you can't I, give it away. You will never get it. I, I don't you know. You will never figure it out. Oh, David, oh. so I know people have to follow and like. What do they do with the secret word exactly? Do they? Yeah, so the secret word is what you comment on the post. I see. Okay. Right. So you're going to comment on there and then tag your four friends right next got to the it. secret word. That's all you got to do. And you can also enter on Facebook in case you don't have an Instagram page. Don't be a cheater out there. Like, actually, <laughs> right. like, actually watch for the secret word. Mm -hmm. But y'all yeah. should give it to the first person who gives it secret word. It's hard. It's hard because you really don't know. You have to go back and, like, time check and everything. Yeah. It's mm. kind of a whole thing. But this is why we're allowing you to enter until next Wednesday okay. because then you can watch again at 11 o'clock. Right, so in case there's any spoilers out there, then you're like, oh, I got to watch again. So <laughs> you can watch tonight. You can watch here in just a couple minutes. Um, and then you're ready to rock and roll. You can enter for the secret word. One minute away. Look at that. There we you have go. a minute. Well, you have the headphone and everything. Wanna, I know. I'm legit on. now, baby. Do you, you want to give us any previews of some of the new restaurants, little teases? Oh, my gosh. Okay. okay. Well, this uh, today, it's all about Fiesta. Okay. So we're only in San Antonio for the show, but we're highlighting all these great events that are happening all across the city, including, get this, there's a place here in town that's going to be getting brisket, putting it into a whole hog and smoking it. It's oh like bacon wrap brisket. It is oh out of control. Gosh. It is so good. Cool. <laughs> <laughs> but starting Janu uh, July 3rd mm -hmm. is the new season of Texas Eats, and we're going to be traveling all around Texas. Oh, yeah. I'm over talking Waco down to Corpus, baby. Wow. We're doing Corpus Christi, my yeah. hometown. Hey, that's your hometown. Woo. There you go. And we're just having a blast doing it. And July 3rd is the kickoff. Actually, on July 2nd, we have a primetime show where we're going to wow. be starting the season just in time for the 4th of July. David, thank you so much for joining. It's so good to see you. Oh, it's good to see you guys. I'm excited. Watch for the secret word, y'all. It's coming up right here in a few seconds. I'm going to say, you want to tell us your own show? Yeah, Texas Eats.